a participant asked for some tips on the backward five beat weave. And we're gonna break it down like this. Um, face this way with me. Okay, you're gonna take your left poi, you're going to spin it backwards and you're just going to bend your knuckles like you're hitchhiking, but bend your knuckles towards your arm a little bit. And what that does is that means there's a lot of space between your arm and your, and your wrist and the spinning poi. That's kind of the secret, or that's how I do it. You can take your right poi and you can just dip it down in that space. And this, uh, you know, it takes some plane control because at first if the plane bends, it'll catch your other poi. So you have to play with it a bit until you can let the poi even swing a little bit and it's swinging in between your arm and the spinning poi. From here, on one of those swings, I can let the right poi catch the left wrist and lead across to the right side. And what's important is that the right poi leads. But you don't actually need to pull that off successfully to, make, uh, to get the progress here. Really, you just need to make some progress with this, getting used to that space. You can reverse it, do it on the other side where the right poi spins backwards and you get used to the left poi being in between your arm and the spinning poi, and you can try letting the left poi catch the right wrist and lead across. And that'll get a lot of the right things happening in your brain, hopefully. Then you try it from spinning poi, and both poi just spin backwards on their own sides. And I can pick, okay, my, I'm gonna try on my left side, so my left hand cocks back, and I've got all that open space, the right poi comes over, hooks, and pulls back. The biggest obstacle at this point will be your muscle memory because what might happen is you'll come over and the left poi will just want to lead because you've done the three beat weave for a long time. And that's what you need to get past. Uh, now that's partially why if you start from here, it can be helpful because you've already broken the pattern a bit and you're starting from somewhere weird. And from here you go, okay, the right leads, the right leads, the right leads. And that can be a good way to get a new habit. But it's really weird. So maybe try from, you know, alternate from starting from swinging and starting from both poi spinning backwards. The right poi leads over and hooks the left wrist. Or the left poi comes over and hooks the right wrist. If I'm helping somebody through this, I'll often just hold a... Uh, Instead of them spinning the poi, I'll just hold it, and then they can't pull it across. And while I'm holding it, I'll say, okay, spin the other poi, come over and hook the wrist, and I'll let go at the last minute. Um, and that'll make them lead with the hooking poi. So those are the best tips I've got. Uh, the poi, you know, if I'm coming from the left side, I just, go this way with my wrist. Just that is all it takes. And putting it all together, it looks like this. The right hooks and leads, the left hooks and leads. The right leads back to the right side, the left leads back to the, right, the left side. I guess the last thing I'll say is the other hand, thumb down. So look at my right my right orange poi, I come across thumb down because that's the way I can kind of wave to myself around the wrist. And a way to practice that, maybe you can just let the, say the left poi hang, spin the right and practice that motion or with no poi at all, just practice the right comes and hooks under the left wrist. And you want as much wrist to wrist action as possible to help the right poi lead over. Vice versa, where the left poi hooks and curls to get under the right wrist. I hope that helps. I'll, I'll try to think of some more tips if it doesn't.